I'm very glad to have the opportunity to join the CTSI retreat today. Uh, when I spoke to Clay, I very much wanted to be with you in person, but we thought second best would be that you have a conversation with virtual chancellor, so here I am. I, I wanted to tell you how important the work you do is for UCSF. When I think of where we're going at UCSF, so much of my hopes and dreams for us as an institution are in the area of translation. The great work that goes on in science here has special meaning when it helps human beings, and that's what you're all about. I know you're talking about where CTSI will go next. I know you're talking about the future, and I want you to know how important it is to me and how meaningful it is to think five years, 10 years from now, what will translation look like? How will we be able to sustain the important work that you do? And how do we think that future generations of not only patients and their families and human beings benefit from the work, but future researchers, clinical scientists of any sort will so benefit from your great work so I wish you great luck with the rest of your deliberations, and I can't wait to hear the outcome of your discussions. How do you see CTSI fitting into your future vision of UCSI? Well, in every way. Uh, I, I think CTSI is, um, that since I wasn't part of starting it, I can give a lot of credit because it won't be bragging. <laughs> I think it's just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> It, it, it is, um, I'm really glad that uh, CTSI is at, at UCSF because I think CTSI, uh, it, it starts with providing some glue across our community. One of the reasons that life sciences innovation is inefficient is we tend to work in silos. Mm -hmm. Collaboration is not instinctive across an academic medical center and CTSI helps with tools and, and uh, approaches that help with collaboration, but the connection to the community that the CTSI has, the innovation in methodology and the training in methodology, CTSI can play a role. So what I think is uh, the CTSI is capable of is asking questions on a bigger picture level. Uh, an investigator asks a question about what's the best therapy for stroke or how can we prevent a recurrence of this cancer? A community of translational scientists can ask a question of how do we ask those questions? What's the best methodology to ask those questions? How can we more efficiently ask those questions? What are, what are novel ways, uh, a, a more cost-effective, novel, faster, more effective ways for us to get those answers? So how can we assure that CTSI thrives in the future, given all the pressures, you know, NIH funding, and we've heard from NIH that they want to cut our funds, you know, the pressures on the university, too, in terms of just core funding for our mission. So how can we assure that we can continue to thrive with those pressures? I, I don't think there's one tactic. Um, I, th I think long term, the, the most effective way for CTSI to thrive is to be a seamless part of the clinical delivery system. Mm -hmm. I, I think we've got to get away from a world where an experience of going to the doctor is seen as a clinical experience or going to the nurse or the pharmacy, whoever the health care provider is. So right now we bin things. That's your clinical care. And it's done in, in this avenue, in this route. And then there's the research enterprise, whether it's basic or clinical research. These are in two separate silos. That's very inefficient and expensive. So for sustainability of the clinical research and translational research enterprise coming to the point of clinical care, so when those come together, then every time I see my clinician, every medical or clinical experience I have is part of what I can see in the future will be a seamless combination of clinical care and research. Mm -hmm. We now have a lot of tools like electronic health records that should enable that to happen, but I don't think ultimate sustainability will come about until that happens. Mm -hmm. Short-term CTSI can help uh, convince the clinical delivery enterprise that, that they won't inevitably lose a lot of money by coming together more closely with clinical research. Right. That, I think that's got to be a short-term goal. 
Great. So it's sort of a provocative last message. I mean, I, uh, not just not lose money, but that we can help them to, you know, maybe even make money or at least provide better care. So being partners as opposed to distractions from care delivery. Um, so that, it, and that is something that we're, we're thinking about a lot and actually how we do that. And actually, the, the example that I gave about the electronic health record and how we can, we can compel the medical center to make that an investment for use for research purposes because it meets its mission, I think is a good example. So it's a shame we don't have her here so that you guys could also ask her questions. Um, but we'll do the same thing again and we'll just keep pounding her and make sure that the others who control her, her calendar don't get in, in our way. Um, so, um, so we thought it'd be interesting too to hear from the schools about how they see things moving forward and about how we can help them to, to deliver on their mission. So David, do you wanna start us out? Well, the CTSI has been incredibly important for all of the schools, and certainly uh, I've been here just a little bit over a year, and just seeing the uh, interactions and impact that it's had on the School of Nursing has just been uh, tremendous, and we look forward to that continuing. I mean, that's happened in terms of the training, uh, traineeships, in terms of the pilot uh, kinds of studies that are allowed to happen but also the bringing together the people to network and again having that go across the schools thinking about the projects that's something that we really value and want to see continue there's been a particular interest I think in the mobile health now digital health and the ability of people who have the interest to be interconnected with each other and I think there's been phenomenal progress just in the past year and we really look forward to seeing that continue to build because I think that's clearly an area of growth and development and also the sustainability that we uh, are all interested in seeing. So the stimulus that comes from CTSI in that area I think is going to have huge rewards and I think that impacts and comes from all the schools together. Yeah, and you, you heard that underlined today by one of the suggestions that came up. Um, so, and Sam, where do you see school of medicine going and how can we help? So, thanks, Clay, and uh, um, I apologize for not having uh, been here for the whole day, but I had the, the great privilege of going to the East Bay to meet with uh, Bert Lubin. Is he here? Yeah. He has yeah. been, yeah. Good, he got back earlier. And I came back just as the Giants game was starting, so I experienced uh, the beginning of a Giants game and then I had to go to the campus and I came down as they threw the last pitch and the Giants game is just ending so I, I'm feeling a little trafficked out. Um, so I'll, I'll be brief, I, I had the privilege of seeing Sue's video uh, uh, previously uh, and I just pick up on a, on a couple of themes that came up uh, so that I don't just keep saying the same things. Um, when you think about how, how are we going to sustain the kind of innovation and excellence that, that we uh, uh, think of, uh, of having achieved at UCSF and aspiring to continue. Well, it's, it's, it's all about differentiation. What, what makes us special? And I think it's relatively easy. We are one of the very, very few, probably count on one hand, uh, uh, significant uh, universities that are dedicated just to health sciences. And if you think uh, in terms of how do we respond to the sustainability question that Clay asked Sue, uh, what do we do in times of tighter resources? Well, I think it's more important than ever that we look at the core. So what is the core of a health science campus? Well, the core of a health science campus, I think, is represented in this room, and that is it is how do we take the phenomenal basic science discoveries that we do and better human health? And the CTSI is positioned to do just that. So I think investing in the core, uh, identifying those areas that we need to enhance the core, uh, a key to what uh, I think the acceleration theme, and I assume that's what you've been discussing uh, throughout the day today. Um, the one thing that I think we as leaders have to have the discipline, and, and you in this room have to have the discipline uh, in, in these times, however, is as we identify the next exciting thing that we need to do, and, and we need to be doing it in the core mission, and as I said, the CTSI is right central to our core mission, is we need the discipline of saying, if we're going to add something, let's just take a look at the portfolio and make sure that everything 
is absolutely critical and functionally important because I think the one thing we're not going to be able to do over the next uh, five or six years is just keep adding and adding and adding. So we need to keep moving, we need to keep advancing, we need to keep accelerating. Uh, the CTSI is right in the sweet spot of our core, so it should be the focus for resource investment. But we need the discipline to be continuously reviewing our portfolio and making sure that everything is critical to the core uh, so that we can do those new investments, those new accelerations. Um, so I hope that wasn't too much off base of what no, you've been perfect. talking about because I, I haven't yep. been here and no. I look forward to hearing the last hour. Thanks. You're, you're in, very intuitive, Sam. You got it. Um, so, and uh, Joe, can you give us perspective from the School of Pharmacy? So um, I guess uh, we all try to talk about UCSF and its uniqueness, and we often describe the, the benefit of the four schools of pharmacy, four schools including pharmacy, medicine, dentistry, nursing. I did say pharmacy first, didn't I? <laughs> and the graduate program. But I guess what I'd like to comment on is that while we talk about that a lot, I would say the true benefits of those inter-school relationships, I think, are far from realized. That said as well, I would say CTSI actually represents, I think, one of the greatest successes of bringing these schools together. And a little bit of a history lesson, uh, I look back when this first came to be, when Mike McCune started off as PI and others such as Dan Lowenstein and Deb Grady and Joel Polefsky, Maury Shamblin and the like, at that time period, it was a time of reaching out to others in a very collaborative way. And I believe the reason that we were so successful first time around was in fact taking advantage of the relative strengths that were offered by this unique interdisciplinary group. And since that time, I think it's continued to exhibit itself. I think the fact that we got the renewal, we've recruited uh, Clay and Bill and others, and, we, and all schools were part of that as well. I think this is what I think the message would be. Now, all that said, uh, while I think this is one of the success stories of UCSF, I still think we have a long way to go. I, I hope that we never forget the opportunities to realize these uh, successes by inter-school relationship. One area I think we still have a ways to go I, is on the basic science end. I think, speaking for my school specifically, uh, the T1 side, I think, by reaching out and figuring out a way to get those colleagues more involved would be, I think, an opportunity for the future. Great. Thanks, Joe. We um, asked John Featherstone to, to speak as well, but um, make a few comments. But he, unfortunately, got called away for, uh, to a funeral. Um, and uh, um, we're going to be hearing more from our other partners. I, I just want to say that the, one of the things that's great about this job is working with such fantastic partners. I mean, we've, we've, um, uh, our mission abuts many other missions on the campus, including the missions of all the, all the school deans um, uh, and also the chancellor's office, executive vice chancellor and provost's office. And, um, and we really just have wonderful partnerships with all those organizations, and that's allowed us to benefit from what each other does well. Um, that's evolving rapidly over time. We expect that to evolve even more going forward so that we're uh, better integrated with those activities in, in, in all of those places. Um, so thank you all, too, for, for being great partners and letting, letting us uh, uh, succeed.